Hey Learning Birds, this is Mr. Ozarka with another lesson brought to you by LearningBird.com. If you have any questions about the following video, you can email me at mrozarka at gmail.com. All right, here we go. All right, so this is going to be a video about constructing tessellations. In order to construct tessellations, we first need to know what they are. This video will primarily focus on tessellations of flat surfaces. You can have tessellations that are three-dimensional as well, but this is not what this video is going to be explaining. Okay, a tessellation of a flat surface is the tiling of a plane using one or more geometric shapes. An important consideration with tessellations is that there are no overlaps or gaps of each of those tiles. Also, that tiling has a specific pattern that it has to follow. Basically, a tessellation is like a puzzle, only every single piece has the same shape and fits together with itself. Examples of tessellations are as follows. Notice that the tiles do not overlap or have any gaps between them. Also, notice that the tiling has a specific pattern to it. I'm going to show you how to create a simple tessellation using only paper, scissors, and some tape. Again, the thing about creating a tessellation is that they are pretty much a puzzle, only every single piece is pretty much the exact same. Each tile may be a different color, but the main shape pattern remains the same, and each tile fits perfectly with itself, again, with no overlaps or gaps. It's important to know that there are many, many, many different ways to construct tessellations. This is just one way that I'm choosing. It's kind of really simple. It's a great way of introdu introducing tessellations. So here we go. So I have a piece of construction paper right here um, that, that's a square. Now you can see I kind of already cut out some shapes on it. I just did that for the sake of this video. But just imagine that this is a perfect square, with some construction paper, something that's a little bit thicker, not just necessarily like writing paper. What you're going to want to do is cut out any single kind of shape that you want. I kind of made mine really curvy. That's just kind of how I felt like I was, I was going to make them, but you can make it however you want um, when you cut this out. And so I'm going to kind of just separate these out a little bit so it's easier to see. So I just kind of cut them out like that. Now again, an important part of tessellations is that they're all the same shape and they fit together. So in order to make these fit together, what I'm going to do with this top piece, so I'm going to remove it from there and it fits perfectly right here. I'm going to make this the bottom part over here on this square. So now I'm going to put that right there on the bottom and then I'm going to tape it on there. An important consideration to know is if you're basically just translating it, you're sliding it from here to here, okay? And you want it to be as, as perfectly slid down as possible. So I'm going to tape this really quick. All right, so you end up with something like that. And so this part, when I redraw it with using this stencil that we're making, this tile that we're making, it will fit perfectly with the, the next shape up here. So if you can't imagine that, spatially in your head, I'm going to show you in a little bit um, as soon as I'm done taping this other end. So what I'm going to do here is the same exact thing. I'm going to take this left side, and I'm just going to translate it to so slide it right over here onto the other side. So you end up with something like that. I end up with some shape that looks like this. Now, the important thing to notice with this is this is the shape of your tessellation. This is going to be the tile that is repeated over and over and over again. So after cutting this and looking at it, if you if you feel like maybe it's better to like flip it over, if you feel like this shape just isn't something that you would like, like you wouldn't like this being repeated over and over again, it's not eye appealing to you at all, then this is when you're going to want to grab another piece of paper and kind of experiment making other shapes. Okay, because sometimes you don't, you, you, you're cutting this out and you think the shape is going to look a certain way and then you notice it after you make the tessellation, you're like, eh, this tile isn't exactly great to repeat, so I'm not going to use this. But for this one, I'm actually just going to keep this for the sake of the video. Um, also, I kind of like the way it looks, it's kind of curvy. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be the, the stencil or the tile for making that tessellation. And I'm gonna make it on this dry erase board right here, although it'd probably be better to make it on a piece of paper. All right, so with the first stencil, I end up with my shape right there. It took a while because I put a lot of curves in it, but it's gonna all pay off at the end when it looks better. But just know that if you put more cuts and more curves into it, it's gonna take longer to, to stencil out, obviously. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing with this stencil, only with a different color now. So let's just do blue. Now, if you notice, based on how this is made, it will match up perfectly with this no matter where I put it. So if I start over here, it's going to match up perfectly. If I go over here, it's going to match up perfectly. If I go down here, it'll match up perfectly, and then up top as well. So it's going to repeat every single time, and each piece is going to fit based on how I made this, because like this is that negative space of this piece right here where I cut that out and put it over here and taped it. So it's always going to work for any, any direction that you want to go to, up, down, left, or right. So I'm just going to do that with other colors now. So let's start over here. So I'll take my stencil out, then I have the blue. As you can see, it fits right next to it perfectly. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this left side. So then we have the red, 
I'm going to go on the bottom right here with some green. And there we have the green. It kind of didn't come out all that great uh, on some of the parts, but that's okay. A uh, really important thing to do too, I kind of use the dry erase board, but you're going to probably want to use pencils when, you, when you're doing this first, just so in case you do mess up, you can just erase it real quick and you don't have any stray marks when you're actually stenciling out or tiling out your tessellation. So basically that gets the idea. I could put more um, and just keep repeating it over and over again because again, that stencil is going to fit wherever I put it. So if I, if, if I want this right here, this would fit here, fit this right here, and it fits right here. This would fit right here. This would fit right here. So you can just keep repeating that that pattern over and over again to get the, just a bigger and bigger tessellation. So that's basically how to uh, construct tessellations. Uh, you might be thinking to yourself, who cares? What? Why do I need to learn anything about this? Well, as you know, art is great for the brain. So just neurologically speaking, it's good to do certain things like this, to do kind of stuff with crafts and that sort of thing. But it's also good for appreciating art. So there are some examples right here of art that uses tessellations. As you can see, it's beautiful pieces of art. Some of them are from the, uh, the BC era. Tessellations have been around a while. And you can kind of also see it sometimes in nature. For example, in this picture with uh, with beehives. Beehives are actually tessellations that are found in nature. Now, there's, there's other places where tessellations show up as well in nature. If you're interested in this stuff, I definitely recommend researching that a little bit more. So if you have any questions about constructing tessellations, let me know. And if you thought this lesson helped you, please be sure to click this was helpful. For other great lessons, be sure to check out learningbird.com.